All right, welcome to unit seven. This is the start in our geometry units. We'll be in geometry talking a little bit about two-dimensional geometry, first with angles, then we'll talk a little bit about area, and then we'll jump into three-dimensional geometry when we talk about volume and surface area. Um, so getting us started, like I said, we're gonna talk about angle angles. This is an introduction lesson and should be a pretty strong review for you. Um, we are going to start in your notes packet on page number two here. So again, this is your new angles notes packet, unit seven. So a couple quick definitions for you here. An angle formed by two rays that share a common endpoint. The vertex is the point where, they, where the two rays are going to meet together. The vertex is kind of like the little hinge on the angle. So if you think about like a door, the little hinge is going to be right here. It's going to keep it opening, closing kind of thing. So complete the table by drawing the hands of a clock to represent these. These four types of angles should be um, a fairly strong review for you. Right angles are exactly 90 degrees. They look like the letter L. So we could have the time being three o'clock on the dot here. Again, just pretend my lines are straight here. For an acute angle, we're talking about less than 90 degrees. So for example, if we had one o'clock, Something that's obtuse would be greater than that L, so greater than the 90 degrees, so for example, five o'clock. And for a straight angle, you would have something that would go exactly straight across, and mind you again, they're not straight lines here, it's partly because of my tablet. Um, so straight across, something like 1230 then would be a time, or exactly if you wanted to do six o'clock, that would be fine as well. For the next part, I'm um, just talking about four different ways that we can name an angle. So right here, this is that hinge piece, which is our vertex. We can actually um, name the angle just by the letter that's there on the vertex. So that could be called angle Y. We sometimes you're going to see numbers inside here. These numbers do not refer to the degrees or the measure of the angle, but instead they're just in reference to which angle we're talking about. So we can also call this angle number one. We can also use three letters to name the angle, and we would start on the one of the ends here, and we would work our way to the vertex, and then work our way to the other end. So we could call this angle X, Y, Z, or we could flip-flop that around and do Z, Y, X. So we'd have angle Z, Y, X. Any one of those four ways is good to name your angles. Um, one of the things that you want to be careful with if you just use the vertex, the only problem is if you have a whole bunch of angles kind of sharing the same vertex, you're not being very super clear at that point in time. Taking a look at this one, um, when we talk about classifying angles, we will just kind of trust our instincts, trust our eyeballs on these. But after we talk about just general classifying here, we don't want to just trust our eyes. We want to actually look at what the angles are actually marked kind of moving forward after this lesson. Because this one is clearly less than a 90 degree angle, we would call it acute. So taking a look down here, we have a couple pictures. I'm going to kind of fly through these. We could call this one angle B. We can call it angle two, we can call it angle A, B, C, or we could flip it and call it angle C, B, A. Either way, it does have this little mark in the corner here. In this little box here, we saw that when we talked about right triangles, that tells us that this is a right angle here. For this next one, we can call it angle four. We could call it by the vertex M. We can call it angle L, M, N, or we can call it angle N, M, L, and this one goes straight across. It is a straight line, which is 180 degrees. So we will call this a straight angle. If you would like to, or you can skip this, you can go ahead and create your own and name it and then also classify it. Following up on page number three, um, two definitions here that might be somewhat new to you. The first one is the word vertical. Vertical angles are going to be formed um, if you have two lines that intersect each other. Intersect just means they cross each other. So right here we can see this line going across in the green and this line going across in the red. They cross over each other and right here in the center we have these opposite angles. So angles 2 and angle 4 are one of our sets and angle 1 and angle 3 is another set. And these are what are called vertical angles. Something pretty cool that happens here is that angle two is actually going to be the same number of degrees as angle four, and then angle one would be the same number of degrees as angle number three. So vertical angles are going to be congruent. They're going to have the same measure. So that is a piece that we're going to use in just a moment here. 
The other angle definition that we have for today that's kind of new is adjacent. Adjacent is how you say that. They're not adjacent, adjacent. So that A becomes a long one. If they share a common vertex, a common side, and do not overlap. So you can see in the center here, this vertex talks about angle one. It's also the same vertex for angle two. It's the same vertex for angle three, and it's the vertex for angle four. So that vertex is doing a lot of vertex work. So since we have this and we want ones that share a common vertex, which they all do, and a common side. So this is kind of like if it was you and your neighbor and you had a fence down your yard. That's the side of your yard that is in common. So angles one and angles two are what we call adjacent or next door neighbor angles. You have another set here if you talked about two and three because they're next door neighbors and this is their fence. You have angles three and four are adjacent to each other. And finally, you have angles four and angle one again, because they also have this common side and the common vertex right there. Unfortunately, um, adjacent angles are just next to each other. They don't necessarily have an angle relationship. So we're gonna look at these. We're gonna look for vertical angles and adjacent angles. Verticals, if you remember, here's your um, crossing over. Line was terrible right there try again. I'm just going to actually use lines here. So we're crossing over here. And so our um, vertical angles are our opposite. So we have angles one and angle three are a set of verticals. And then another set is angle two and angle four. If we talk adjacent, we have angle one and angle two. We have angle two is adjacent to angle three. Angle three is adjacent to angle four. And angle four is adjacent to angle one. In the railroad crossing sign, our verticals are here at two and four, so angle two and angle four. And then we also see it here at one and three. And adjacent would be angles one and angle two again, angle two and angle three, angle three and angle four, and finally angle four and angle one. So vertical angles, remember that vertical angles are going to be congruent to each other. So if they're across from each other, they're going to actually be exactly the same measure. So in this picture, if this angle here is 121, this one is vertical because it's made by two lines crossing over. So this side is also going to be 121 degrees. Here, two lines crossing over, they're opposite each other. So this one's going to be 37 degrees. This one, we actually have to find the angle. This little M out front means measure of angle, TKE. So TKE is right here. It says this is 87 degrees. Find the measure of angle AKS. AKS is this guy right here. These are verticals, so this one is also 87 degrees. One final definition for today is a linear pair. Inside the word linear, hopefully you see the word line a line pair. So this is two angles that together form a line. So a line, if you think about a straight angle, is 180 degrees. So when you add the two angles together, you get 180. So these two form this straight line here. You have this angle right here and this angle right here. So that tells me that the circle plus the star is going to equal to 180. So if I know that the circle is 67, I can do 180 minus 67, and I'm going to get 113 degrees left over for the star part. Over here, these two form a line. This side doesn't have a measure, but it has that box, which tells me it's 90. So to get this other side, I'm doing 180 minus 90, and that's going to give me 90 degrees for Z. The other example here, these two form a line. So I'm going to do 180, take away the 44, which is going to give me 136. So y is 136 degrees. So linear pair, just two angles that together form a line. They have to add up to be 180 degrees. So what I'm going to have you do at this point is just kind of pause the video and see if you can go through, name some of these pieces, um, talking about adjacent, talking about verticals, seeing if you see any linear pairs from this. And then I'm going to go ahead in just a second here, start talking down here about the bottom part. So adjacent angles, I'm not going to write them one and two, 
two and three would be a set, three and four, four and five, and five and one. Verticals only happen when you have intersecting lines. So if I was example looking at two and five, notice that this part right here, and I'll go back over it in yellow, this is not a line. So this one would be. So two and five are not actually verticals. There is only one set of vertical angles that's actually here in this picture, and that would be angle one and angle three then. So they are verticals that will help us out later on. Um, if we talk about linear pairs, we're looking at two angles that make a line. So kind of tilting your head a little bit, notice that one and two actually create a line together. And then also kind of tilt your head the other way, notice that two and three create a line together. Three, four, and five do, but they're not a pair because there's actually three of them. A pair would mean that we have only two. So coming down here, if we're told that angle three is 40 degrees, and angle five is 47 degrees, can we fill in the rest? So we could because we know that one and three are verticals, so they're gonna be the same. So this is gonna be 40 degrees. We know that one and two are a linear pair, which means they add to 180. So if one is already 40, 180 minus 40 is gonna leave me with 40 degrees, or 140, excuse me, here for angle number two. And then using kind of the idea that they're not a linear pair, but they do all have to add up to be 180, I can figure out angle 4 because 40 plus 47 is 87. And these three all add up to be 180. So 180 minus 87 is going to give me 93 then. So angle 4 is going to be 93 degrees. One of the other ways I could check this too is that if I start at a point and go all the way around, doing a full circle is going to be 360 degrees. So I could have also figured out taking 360 and subtracting all that I already have. In this next example, same thing. I'm going to ask you to use kind of some of those strategies, vertical angles that we have, linear pairs, and then trying to use that 360 all around. I'm going to have you pause the video and start to fill some of the stuff in and then come back and check things. Alrighty, so getting started here, um, I'm kind of drawn to this 65, and I notice that the line here forms that side, and the line here forms that side, which means these two are actually vertical angles. So this angle right down here is also going to be 65 degrees. Um, nothing for this 60, but I did notice in this process that the 30 gets made by this line, and this line, and that actually does form an angle over here. So this one's going to be 30 degrees over here. Up at the top, again, not a linear pair, but it does form a line, the three of them. So 30 plus 65 is going to give me 95. So then if I do 180 minus the 95, I'm going to get 85. So this angle up top here is 85 degrees. And then I can either go through and add all these together, or I can kind of just focus on the bottom. It's not a linear pair, but together these four would actually make 180. So if I have 65 plus 60 plus 30, that's going to give me 120, 155. So then if I do 180 minus 155, I'm going to be left with 25 degrees down over here for this side. And that actually does kind of make sense. If you look here, taking these two lines, this angle is 85, so if I put these together, it should actually match. So there you have it for your first lesson in angles. A um, lot to talk about. One of the things that you want to make sure you do after today's lesson is kind of go back. Make sure you're good with all the vocabulary. So vocab terms that we started off with, um, just angle, vertex, right, acute, obtuse, straight, we talked today about um, verticals, congruent means to have the same measure, adjacent angles. We talked about vertical angles and their measures, and we talked about a linear pair. So those are all vocab terms that you're going to want to go back to and make sure that you are super comfortable with before you move on to the next lesson.